Hi, my name is Ray Eves and this is uh, the first in a series of four videos entitled How Ray the Sun Came Into Being. The stories of the beginning were copied from ancient Neolithic and pre-dynastic Tamaray, Egypt. Neolithic Egypt is Ham, who is known by the Egyptian name Ham, Cam, or Kemi. And it is referring to the people who lived along the Blue and the White Nile, Python and Gihon. At the beginning of the world there existed neither heaven nor earth. Nothing existed except the boundless mass of primeval water which was shrouded in darkness. This primeval water, called Nu, contained the germs and beginnings of everything which was to be in the future world. The divine primeval spirit, an essential part of the primeval matter, felt within itself the desire to begin the work of creation. So its word woke to life the world. It began to move. Thus, the creatures which were to constitute the future world were formed according to the divine intelligence, Ma'at, under the influence of Tehuti, who created the world by a word. Eight elements, four males and four females, arose out of the primeval water called Nu, possessing the properties of male and female. They were considered the primeval mothers and fathers. The first act of creation began with the egg. Ray, the immediate cause of all life on earth, emerged out of that egg in the form of the rising sun. In chapter 104 of the Egyptian Book of the Dead, Geb, the Nitir of time and earth, is said to have laid an egg or the universe. And Nu says, I watch that mighty thing which had come into being and with which the Nitir Geb has opened the earth. Unquote. Geb's consort, Nut, represents heaven. The hieroglyphic of his name is the goose, for which reason he is called the goose that laid the cosmic egg or the golden egg, symbolic of the sun, which, from which Re or Ra was born. The root of all manifestation is the cosmic egg, which is a universal symbol. It represents the origin and mystery of being, the progressive development of the germinal life within the shell, the inward working, self-sustained, with nothing added except heat, yet an active something is engendered. When the inward evolution is complete, another mystery appears, a living creature comes forth, knowing where and how to puncture and crack the shell. To all intents, a self-generated and self-created thing, a mystery to early humanity, no mystery, no great mystery to us. So the light of Ray, or the sun, give birth to itself out of chaos, that is talking about when 554 million tons of hydrogen changed into 550 million tons of helium each second on the sun as it burns. Out of chaos is speaking of the original suns that exploded. Our very own Milky Way was formed from a massive sun called Sal, collapsing and exploding outward. Then that Milky Way exploded again and gave birth to our present day sun called Shamush or Helios. 
which is 93 billion years old. Before this sun called Shamush became a ball of burning of gas containing hydrogen and helium, it was an active planet called Aum. Aum contained all of the planets, moons, satellites, which make up this solar system today. This solar system is one of 19 planets that surrounded a more massive sun called Sol. Sol was named after its original ruler, Sol or Sol, whose wife was Arinna. Their combined rulership gave you the name Sol Arinna, or shortened to Sol R. This massive sun, Sol, collapsed and exploded outward, and Aum got caught in its gravitational pull. Then Aum exploded and gave birth to our sun, Shamush. All 19 of the planets were hurled off into space and exploded to, cre to create 19 galaxies in space and beyond. The story of creation is entitled, The Book of Knowing How Re or Ra Came Into Being and is told by the Supreme Being, Neb Ir Tachir. Neb Ir Tachir is the everlasting Supreme Being of the universe. The desire to create the heavens and the earth arose in his heart or mind, and he assumed the form of the Supreme Being, Khitira, or Khitira, who was regarded as a form of Nu, or the Creator. At this time, nothing existed except the vast mass, mass of celestial waters which the Egyptian called Nu. Khitira came into being by pronouncing his own name. When Khitira rose out of the watery mass, he found himself in empty space. After conceiving the image of the place on which he would stand and giving that place a name, he uttered that name and the standing place at once came into existence. This process of thinking out the existence of things translates into English as laying the foundation of the heart. Khifira also possessed a ba, a heart soul, which assisted him in depicting in his mind the image of the world to come. At this time, or oh, at that time, creation was not accomplished using female counterparts. The supreme being of creation, the creator of human beings from mud, Nitir Khnum, is he who gave the power of procreation to the female through mitochondrial DNA much later. Nitir Khnum is the one who got the script or the chemical chart in the form of DNA on how to create a being in the image of the in the Nitiru's image and after their likeness. Before this, beings were created by genetic manipulation or cloning, or as Ray or Tihuti had done, thought themselves into existence, having no mother, no father, no beginning of days, no end of life. They had the ability to do this because they are nine-dimensional beings. It was 76 trillion years ago when these woolly-haired deities were in their cream history. They were living in air pockets in the form of gases in the Ethereum state while they were in the process of creating and growing this present universe. This period of time was long before Adam or Cardamon was in the flesh. Nuwabo informs us that there are three creations. First, there was original or primary creation, which, is, which was performed by Ethereans 
where subatomic energies existed in the form of gases, nine levels of them. These subatomic energies registered as nothingness because they were in existence before the lightest atom, hydrogen, and thus these particles had no weight or sum of weight. Thus, th there is existence before creation, as darkness predates light, as nine ether before the lightest atom, hydrogen, is weighted to have some, and from ether into triple darkness, which are, one, the state of quarks, the first degree of darkness, the first degree of nothingness, two, the state of biaps, the second degree of darkness, and three, the state of zeals, the third degree of darkness. Next there was secondary or evolutionary creation, which is the evolving of existence from density to matter to atoms to cells to organisms to bodies. Then there was tertiary or gustation creation, which is the breath of life, the living soul, the, exi the existing conscious being. Nine ether is the combination of all gases of nature. Nothing anywhere can be as powerful as all the existing gases. Thus nine ether is the most potent power in all of the boundless universes. It is the original creator who grew all the universes. Nine ether beings f utilize the forces which yield energy, versing energy, into one form called the universe. Nine ether then personified themselves as flesh and blood beings from atoms to atom. Yes, it was then that the true force of the universe personified those supreme beings, those nine dimensional beings, by both using sound and electric energy. They personified by using both positive and negative energies, electromagnetic energies, electro being negative and magnetic being positive, light being electro and the light spectrum being magnetism. Truth is truth. Th thus ends today's tape. We hope you have learned something from this video. We hope you share this video and to subscribe to the only channel where you will learn true ancient Egyptian mysteries. No more lies, no more guesswork. So subscribe, share. See you at video number two.